Welcome everyone, my name is Brendan Snyder. Thank you for joining me. This is Top 5 Glam Metal Albums of 1991. I think this was the last great year of uh, glam metal, hair metal, hair bands, whatever you want to call the particular genre. 1991 was the final year of it before it all kind of came crashing down. And these top five artists and albums that I'm going to talk about here, I think really epitomize the sound of that genre, really capping it off. Uh, perfectly in my opinion. If you want to know what that era was like, check out these five albums. Now before we go any further and dive into all of that, if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please click the button. Also leave a comment, hit like. I would really appreciate it. All those things help support my channel. I'm going to ask you guys to do one additional thing. If you really like this video or you know someone that would, please share it. I'm trying to get the word out about my channel. That would really help me. So thank you very much. And of course, as I always say, by subscribing, you'll be able to stay up to date on all that's going on in the world of music, just like this, where we're going to talk about the top five glam metal albums of 1991. And I've got some honorable mentions here uh, real quickly to go through uh, that didn't make the list for one reason or, or another, but I really do like them. Uh, Bullet Boys, their second album, Freak Show, just really fantastic. A uh, song like uh, Hang On St. Christopher and uh, Do Me Raw, uh, Hell Yeah, THC Groove, all of those were just really fantastic. Black Eyed Susan, their debut, Electric Rattlebone. This will figure in a little bit later because the front man for this is uh, Dean Davidson of Britney Fox. When he left Britney Fox, he formed this band here. Really great stuff. Check out the track, None of It Matters, if you don't know. That was the lead single and sort of their hit off of that album, if you will. White Lion, Main Attraction, uh, their final album, technically their fourth, but only the third in the U.S. at the time. Uh, this one here, just really, really great stuff. Um, Broken Heart and uh, Love Don't Come Easy were the big singles off of it at the time. And um, whether you consider this guy part of the hair metal, glam metal movement or not, Alice Cooper, I mean, he certainly inspired all the artists and everything, and he was making albums of that style during the time. So you got Hey Stupid, uh, this album here, really great. Of course, that track there and the follow-up single, Loves a Loaded Gun is just a good one. And then I know a lot of you guys would uh, call this one out and or think it should be in the top five. It didn't make it for my list, but I do recognize it. It is a great album. Skid Row, Slave to the Grind. Uh, the lead track, uh, Monkey Business, is just classic, classic, uh, you know, glam metal sound at that time. And of course, uh, the title track, Slave to the Grind. But there's just some really, really good ones in here in a darkened room, Quicksand Jesus. So the ballads on that one alone were just fantastic. And now we're going to jump into the top five glam metal albums of 1991. Um, and I also want to just point out that these five albums that I'm about to talk about here are also my favorite album by these bands overall. So they're not only the top five for 1991, but the reason I chose to do this year and pair this together is these are actually my favorite albums from those artists too. So coming in at number five, and this ties into um, the Black Eyed Susan release that I just showed you guys. Britney Fox and their third album, but this is without Dean Davidson, the original vocalist. Tommy Paris comes in on this one, and I think he does an outstanding job. Personally, I think this third album is their best album. Um, the sound of this is similar in vain to Cinderella. If you don't know Britney Fox, uh, Michael Kelly Smith, the guitar player, actually came from Cinderella, so uh, before they were signed. But that's uh, sort of where their sound comes from, but it's just good, dirty, sleazy, uh, glam metal at its best, in my opinion. And I think this album here really, really epitomizes things. Uh, some guest artists that are on here, Zach Wild from, of course, Ozzy's band, Black Label Society, and Ricky Rocket of Poison guest on here. So kind of cool about that. And if you've ever wondered who the uh, model is that's on this cover, it's Brittany Powell. Uh, she did pose in Playboy, and I don't know if they got her because of the name, Brittany Powell tying into Brittany Fox. Uh, it is spelled differently, um, but uh, that's who she is if you've ever wondered that. And uh, they made a video for the song Louder, so you can look that up on YouTube and check it out. It's a great track. And I also want to point out the final track on the album, Midnight Moses, which is a cover song of uh, the Sensational Alex Harvey Band. And uh, I was talking about them in uh, my previous video of New Music Finds. I'll leave a link in the description below. But I mentioned Britney Fox and the tie-in there, so if uh, that caught your ear, 
do check it out. Okay, coming in at number four, Enough's Enough Strength. Personally, again, my favorite album by this band. It was their second album. The band comes from Blue Island, which is just outside of Chicago, Illinois. So they do tie into that whole Chicago music scene. They formed in 1984. And um, Chips Enough, Donnie V, the two main guys in the band and songwriters, uh, they give this sound of this album, this sort of Beatlesque pop sound mixed with psychedelic uh, overtones and influences, of course, all mixed in with glam. So, I mean, Beatles sounds, psychedelia, and glam all rolled into one. That is what uh, Enough's Enough is. Uh, great tracks off here. Two music videos made, Mother's Eyes and Baby Loves You. And um, I think a lot of people I've talked with have also agreed they think that is the best out of the catalog. Okay, coming in at number three, we've got Kicks and Hotwire. Now, this band comes from uh, Maryland and formed way back in 1977, so they were kicking around for a long time, actually under the name The Shoes. Yes, the pun was intended, um, but changed their name to Kicks and uh, got signed. This is their fifth studio album, and the sound for them, they're more akin to ACDC in the hard rock vein, but uh, again, they just made really good, dirty, sleazy rock that I think fits into this glam metal scene. Um, the lead singer, uh, Steve Whitman, just perfectly vocalizes and um, projects that sort of you know, sound and personifies that and everything. So really, really great uh, stuff from them. Four singles and videos came off of it at the time. None of them really took hold, but Girl Money, uh, which you can see behind me here, I'll actually show you guys this. I got this, it's a promo thing, it's a bank to save your girl money in from Kicks. It was all to promote the new album and you could pop the top off and get your, uh, your money out of it. But yeah, a cool little promo that I got to go along with this and the lead single, Girl Money. They also released Hot Wire, Tear Down the Walls, and Same Jane, Same Jane being my favorite song off of this album. And coming in at number two, uh, Great White Hooked, um, band from Los Angeles, California, also formed way back in 77. So kind of cool seeing some of these bands, you know, really hit their peak right there at the tail end, having started way, way back the way they did. Now, this was the follow up to their double platinum album, Twice Shy. This one itself went gold eventually. Um, this, the album itself, interesting, this art on it was deemed too risky. The original art is what you see on the inside with the girl exposed out of the water, but it was deemed too risky, and so some vinyls were printed up with it, which I have one of those, but this is what ultimately became uh, the, the set in the second pressing of this. And the sound of this is just good straight ahead rock and roll, um, but you know they've got so much swagger mixed in with it in the guitars and all that sort of stuff. I think it fits perfectly in this genre. And they had three singles that came off it, semi-hits that helped the album get to gold status. Call It Rock and Roll, which is the lead single and very, very close to the sound of what was on um, once or Twice Shy, which had the song Once Bitten, Twice Shy. So they just sort of carried that through. But this one they wrote, Once Bitten, Twice Shy, was actually um, a song by Ian Hunter of Mott the Hoople. Desert Moon, which is my favorite track off the album, was the second single, really great. And the third single, Can't Shake It. Now, um, in one of my previous uh, New Music Find videos, I talked about getting The Angels, the greatest hits by them. In the US, outside of Australia, they're an Australian band. Outside of the US, they're known as um, Angel City. So you're gonna find them under either of those, but they wrote the song Can't Shake It. They also wrote the song Face the Day. So if you like those two tracks by Great White, you should definitely check out the Australian band, The Angels, and you may find them under the name Angel City. Um, okay, coming in at number one here, L.A. Guns and Hollywood Vampires. Uh, this album here, I think, just totally epitomized uh, the whole glam metal, hair metal, again, whatever you want to call it, movement, and especially for 1991. Um, this one here, uh, you know, the guys are out of Los Angeles, California. They formed way back in 83, broke up for a small period, reformed by uh, Tracy Guns, and we know that whole story about him having been in uh, Guns N' Roses with Axel. That's how they got the Guns part of the name to it, was from him. But he later leaves and reforms LA Guns, and they're doing this. This was their third studio album. The album cover itself is actually uh, 3D, and uh, it comes with 3D glasses, and you can 
put on your glasses and look at the album cover and it will pop out and it does unfold really large and you can look at it that way. But it's a cool little uh, promotional thing that they did with this. The sound of this album here um, is actually uh, moved them away from that sleaze metal uh, sort of style that the previous two albums had been on and it was a much more developed mature style uh, for this album here. It featured four singles on here. Kiss My Love Goodbye, Some Life for Love, Over the Edge, and It's Over Now. And that final song was actually a pretty sizable hit for them. It reached number 62 on the Billboard Hot 100. So kind of interesting that in 1991, tail end of 91, and, and maybe even into 92, they were still having some success with all of this. So there you go. Those are my top five glam metal albums of 1991. I feel like this was the last great year of all of it. And I think these five artists and albums really epitomized uh, that sound there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you did, please remember to comment, like, and subscribe. Uh, share the video if you will. Let me know your thoughts. And I hope everyone has a great day. Talk to you all real soon. Bye-bye, everyone.